Amen. This evening, as we move forward, we are switching our um, we're switching our uh, how do I say this? We're switching our uh, presentation a little bit uh, from the focus of the uh, scientific on the psychological to the biblical perspective. Um, the biblical perspective is very important as we are, are aware that there is really nothing that we can do within ourselves to please the Lord because the power and the anointing, the grace, the blessings of the Lord and the uh, ability for minds to be changed does not lie within our own capacity, but within the power and the anointing of the Lord. And so this evening we are going to deal with a couple of aspects as it relates to man managing the mind. Our second slide um, has the, uh, the, the scripture preparation that we would be doing as we have been going from the last three weeks. One new passage have been added that we will look at as we move forward tonight. And that is in Ephesians chapter three, one through 20. We begin with the third slide where we are reminding ourselves just a little bit of um, what we have gone through in the past two weeks. And it says here that the mind has been diversely defined as that which is responsible for one's thoughts, feelings, the seat of the faculty of reason, or the aspect of intellect and conscience, experience as combination of thought, perception, memory, emotion, will, and imagination, including all unconscious cognitive processes. The term is often used to refer to Im implication, by implication to the thought, the process of reasoning. We also talked about the process of the mind, the heart, the spirit, and the soul that they are all one and the same, even though there are scriptures that in accordance with the context that we read will identify these entities as distinctive, but as a whole, he lives and is supported by the brain. I stated earlier that God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ designed our body to regenerate itself. And every activity that takes place in the body is commanded by the brain. And this is being done even without us being cognizant of what is happening. And we will uh, uh, deal a little bit on that as we move through our presentation tonight. From these historical facts, in the description of the multifaceted ways in which we receive knowledge. And I'm, I am uh, stressing again, we receive knowledge, we receive information and the help we must render to the body for it to replenish itself, replenish itself through neurogenesis, angiogenesis, collateral arteries, to name a few of the incomprehensible marvels that God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ has given to us, we must agree that the responsibility, the critical effort is on you, it's on me to take control of our destiny and implement a change in our mindset. 
the onus is, is on you and I to make change. Because like we said before, if we do not feed the brain, if we do not eat properly, then what's going to happen if we do not do these things is all of a sudden we become malnourished. The brain will not have the blood flow or the oxygen. I mean, our body starts to go in atrophy. All kinds of things start happening. We literally need the physical body to accommodate what God has given unto us to glorify him. The Apostle Paul states very clearly, I pray that God will preserve your, your, your spirit, soul, and body blameless. Not just the mind, not just the spirit, but the body, the temple that becomes the dwelling place of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So in our presentation tonight, as we switch from the uh, concepts of the physical and psychological, we are moving into managing our mind, managing our mind with the biblical approach. And in this, we will deal with controlling our emotions. We will deal with guarding our mind. We will deal with positive thinking and the power of our words, and we will deal with steps to renewal. And let me just take a step back. When we talk about positive thinking and the power of renewal, I want us to understand here that we are not talking about the worldly concept of positive thinking, but the concept that is laid out for us in the word of God. Uh, our next slide, there is a question that is being asked. And the question is very simple. What have God set in place for us in order for us to manage our minds? What have God set in place in order for us to manage our minds. I'm going to take a little time out now to read the passage that I've been added from Ephesians chapter 3. I know it's a little bit of lengthy reading, but I want to read this for you so that um, uh, as we go through the rest of the presentation in terms of managing our mind, we are definitely going to be coming back to the scripture reading. So if you have your Bibles or you have your iPhones open to your Bibles, you can turn with me to Ephesians chapter 3 as I read. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, let me start again. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if he have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me toward you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote before in few words, by which when he read, intake of information, he may understand by wisdom, by knowledge, Again, information, the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now, revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. The Gentiles should be fellow ears of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ by the gospel, of which I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who am less than the least of all 
saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship in the mystery which from the beginning of the ages had been hidden in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose, which he pur purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore I desire that he faint not at my tribulation, for you, which is your glory, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by the Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that he being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all things what is the breadth and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge that he might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Let me read that one, just one more time. Now, unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. There are a couple of verses that we read there that is very important in terms of where we're going with our discussion this evening. In these verses, we find out that God has given us knowledge. God has given us power. And that power lies within us to not just in terms of what we're asking of him, but in terms of what we do to allow for the power of God to work in us. We have affirmed, reinforced our affirmation and our intake of information, knowledge of the renewal of the mind and body through neurogenesis, angiogenesis, the collateral arteries and the input, of re and the input required of us. But we also understand that for any spiritual and eternal value to be effected. No works, no flesh can please God. And it tells us on our next screen here, therefore, for us to please God and begin to process and begin the process of change a shift in our mindset, we must turn to the creator, the only one who knows the blueprint, Jesus, the master builder. He is the one that created us and he knows every single cell, every neutron, every aspect of the makeup of our body. He knows that. And so I wanna reiterate as we are going through this evening that the biggest 
takeaway, the thing that I want for us to understand as we move through the, the series of lessons is that we have a responsibility, the responsibility, the onus is for change, for renewing of our minds. It is our duty. The power lies within you. The power lies within me. In our scripture reading, in the last, uh, second to last verse that was read, it tells us very clearly, all that we're able to think, anything that we're able to ask of God our Father, he tells us that he, God, is able to do abundantly more than we are able to ask or think according to the power that is within us. When it says here, the power that is within us, we need to understand this is not our power. This is not the flesh. This is not our spirit, but it's talking about the power of God that is in us, Jesus Christ, our Lord, because the word tells us it is he that is in us to will and to do according to his good pleasure. So as much as we have learned and understand that in the exercises that we do, in order to keep the brain alive and active, in order to build muscles and, and all of those things, it tells us that in all of those things, the spiritual application has to do with the power of God in us. And without the application of the power of God, the word of the Lord in us, I'm afraid that nothing that we do is going to be worth, or I should put it, to put it another way, nothing that we do is going to increase or bring us to any level of maturity without the power of Christ in us. The next, the next uh, slide that we're looking at, I think this is slide number 11. And we, we have our beloved sister, Olivia, and we have Pastor Wallace, who we have enjoyed their uh, input so much. And last week, I could not help myself but to ask them to, again, make a contribution to our presentation this evening. Uh, Pastor Wallace is actually gonna be coming first before Olivia, and we are dealing with managing our emotions. And uh, so before Pastor Wallace comes, because he is gonna help us to understand the, the implication that is necessary for the the, 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 the power that lies within us to be, begin to work on our behalf. So it says here, we can only do this through the eternal incarnate word with the Holy Spirit, whom he, God, has given to us to manage our mind. So he's gonna be, be speaking to us on that. But before he comes, and even before we go into the, the, the description of the different concepts of the emotions, negative and positive, I'm going to ask you to go down to slide number 13. And I want to just talk for a little bit um, about what's going on in our minds as we go from day to day. And these, this is happening even without we us realizing what is taking place. It is said that there are 48, 48 thoughts that are being processed in our minds every minute. 
that 48 thoughts amount to 69,000, uh, a little over 69,000, approximately 70,000 thoughts per day. That in itself may be mind boggling, but that's not mind boggling enough. It goes on to tells, tell us, there are 25,550,000 thoughts that is processed in our minds every year. 100 billion brain cells are powered by uh, uh, neurotransmitters. And, and I'm, I'm so glad that the folks who are online we got some nurses and we got some folks uh, who are online today and, and they, are, they are able to tell us even better than I can, the concepts of the neurotransmitters and what they do and how they work. So it says the neurotransmitters, the thoughts in the brain are powered by the neurotransmitters the neurotransmitters are powered by the blood and the neurotransmitters develop pathways in the brain based on our thinking or thoughts. And our thoughts carry electrical pulses that fire repeated messages down the pathway in our brain. And it goes on and on and on. So what's happening is that our mind is at work continuously. We, we are on this road that goes into infinity and at any time and at any path on that road, our mind is hard at work. And the only way for us to allow for the renewal and change to take place is to ensure that these thoughts that are running loose in our minds are controlled. And God has given us the power to control these thoughts. These thoughts. We're not gonna go back up, Pastor Wallace. If, if Pastor Wallace, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good evening, Pastor. Mark. Thank you, thank you. So we're gonna go back up. And before we even go any further into this, Pastor Wallace is going to tell us exactly how the incarnate word, and, 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 and I was a little um, specific in terms of the incarnate word, because I want for us to have a, a, a good uh, foundation as we move forward into managing our minds. Pastor Wallace. All right, thank you and good evening to you again, Pastor Heard, Pastor Forrest, everyone, your daughter as well, to everyone who, who are on right now. So I would like to start off by saying that the fourth gospel, and that's it, that's the, the gospel of John. And the first verse of the first chapter read like this. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him was nothing made that was made. And when we jump down to verse 14 of the same chapter, it said, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thank you, the word made flesh is the incarnation of the living word, Jesus the Christ. This word existed from eternity. Amen. Hallelujah. And, 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 and so we look at the word incarnate. It's a Latin verb, me, um, incarnare, which means to make flesh. 
So when we say that Jesus Christ is God incarnate, we mean that the Son of God took on a fleshly body and, and, and a, a body of flesh in John 1, 14, and he dwelt. Jesus, the incarnate word, came and he tabernacled on earth for a while. He had some followers, disciples. He was their teacher. So whilst here, Jesus was the disciples' comforter. We remember on the ship when they feel that they were, or they felt that they were going to be um, taken down with the storm, Jesus awoke, spoke to the wind, peace be still, and asked them, why are you so fearful? So he comforts and calmed their fear. Miracle worker. And he was their revealer of truth. Jesus is not here in the physical form now. But he made a promise to his disciples and a promise that we, uh, that was made to us as well. In John 14, 16, Jesus said, and I will pray the father and yes. he shall yes. give you another comforter yes. that yes. may abide with you forever. That's the King James Version. Listen to the Amplified Version of the same passage. And I will ask the father and he will give you another comforter, which means counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and stand by that he may remain with you forever. This comforter that Jesus speaks of is the Holy Spirit. Yes. Luke 29, 49, and, and behold, I am sending you the promise. That, that was before the promise we see there in John 14. I am sending the promise of my father upon you, but remain in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Amen. And in John 7, 39, he was speaking about the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. For the spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. And yes. Jesus' final command prior to his departure in Acts chapter 1, verse 4 to his disciples. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard of me. And that fulfillment, Pastor heard and others, came in the... Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, and it reads, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, yes. all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit has given them utterance. Now, so what we are seeing, the incarnated word, incarnate word, and the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. So we know that the word is Jesus Christ. The written word is all about the living word with Jesus Christ. Amen. And Jesus, the, the living word came and dwelt among us. But Jesus, the Christ, is no longer with us in the flesh. But he has sent another comforter in the form yep. of the Holy Spirit. We we'll praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And, 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 and we're seen now by virtue of the Holy Spirit in us, the incarnate word that dwell in us. Amen. The Holy Spirit for us is a helper who teach and remind. Yeah, it said the Holy Spirit is, is our helper now. It's an advocate. It's our counselor. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit dwell in believers. Amen. Do you not know that you're God's temple, Paul asked, and that God's spirit dwells in you? 
the Holy Spirit is a source of revelation, wisdom, yes. and power. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Listen to Paul. These things, these are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. Yes. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For Amen. who knows a person's thoughts except for their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thought of God except the spirit of God. Oh, praise Amen. the name of the Lord. Praise no. the holy name. Uh, but, but, Pastor, I, heard that I have about four more to go. Can I finish those? Yes, please. In the name Amen. of Amen. So Jesus knew that his disciples would need a power and yep. an equally us. Amen. To carry out their mission, to be witnesses to the entire world. Amen. Yes. Amen. So Jesus told his disciples, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witness. Amen. The Holy Spirit guide us in all truth including knowledge of what is to come. Amen. Amen. And, amen. Listen, listen to, to John 16, 13. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Truth because he guides believers in all truth. Jesus told his disciples the Holy Spirit would make them know what he hears and would only speak what the fa Father speaks. But when he, the Spirit of Truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. Amen. Number six, the Holy Spirit gives spiritual gifts to the believer. Let me repeat that. The Holy Spirit gives spiritual gifts to the believer. And I want that to sink in deep because we would have been the victim of person misappropriating the word of God to suggest that because somebody don't speak in another language, then they don't have the gift of the Holy Spirit. We cannot determine or dictate to the Spirit what gifts we should receive. The Holy Spirit is the determined, is the, is the, is the, is the power, is the source that determines what gift is given to individuals. But all of us as believers in the church would have got a gift. Amen. Number seven, the Holy Spirit is a seal in the lives of a believer. In, ancient, in the ancient world, a seal was a legal signature attesting ownership and validating what was sealed. Listen here to Paul again. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When, when you believe you were marked in him with a seal, the promise Holy Spirit, who is a deposit, guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And number eight, the Holy Spirit helps in Christian weakness and intercede for them. So in our weak, in our moment of weakness, the Holy Spirit helps. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us. Praise the name of the Lord. Through wordless groan. And he who searches our heart knows the mind of the Spirit. And finally, the Holy Spirit makes believers new. It said, but Christ in you, then even though your body is subjected to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And in the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give you life, will give life to your mortal bodies because of His Spirit who lives in you. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are seeing that the Holy Spirit, the promised comforter, amen. The, 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 the word, the spirit of, 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 of Christ, of God, living in us, will allow us to live, will allow us to see, will allow us to overcome, will pray for us. So without the Holy Spirit, I think Pastor Heard alluded to it, so without the Holy Spirit in our lives, we are just aimlessly going along. But the 
power of the Holy Spirit, we are no longer ordinary persons. It's as if we are being equipped with supernatural power to do the things that the Lord would have us to do. Thank Amen. you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, Pastor Wallace. Uh, I, I tell you, I'm sitting here, I'm listening to you. I, I think we should just have an altar call. Oh, that be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Absolutely nothing that we can do, notwithstanding all the information that we have, notwithstanding everything that we now know in terms of our responsibility, without the supernatural power, without the incarnate word of God, blessed be the name of the Lord, our effort is of no value. And I wanted for us to understand that so that as we are going through, we will know that not only has God empowered us, but he has actually put within us a supernatural power that will influence what we do. I had a purpose for putting all of this stuff for you to see in terms of the, the, the amount of thoughts that is flowing through our minds every day. It is mind boggling. It seems almost impossible. But let's just think about this for a minute. If I have 70,000 thoughts going through my mind every day, and I don't even know that. Can you imagine if I am able by the power of God to control these thoughts, take control of these thoughts and make sure that they are positive thoughts. Praise the Lord. Let's go back to slide number uh, 11 for a moment there. Pastor Heard. Yes, sir. Before you go to slide number 11, there is two, I would want to think it's a question within yes. the chat. I don't know if it's to Pastor Glendon Wallace or to you. The first one goes, so what did Paul meant when he said to the church, COVID, the best gift? The second one is, is it right for one to pray and ask the Holy Spirit for a particular gift? Okay, so those two questions, I'm um, thank, thank, thanking the participants who have put those in the, in the chat, but those two questions are not in the discussion that we're dealing with right now, as the first one is talking about speaking in tongues, and Paul addressed that in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 12 through 14, and the next one, what was the next one? The next one is, um, is it right for one to pray and ask the Holy Spirit for a particular gift? Okay. So, you know, as we go through the, the, this presentation this evening, I think that there is something that is going to address that also. Okay. And we have been talking about this um, since the last couple of uh, weeks in terms of what God has empowered us to do for ourselves. And in this concept that Pastor Wallace has just presented, we understand that there are certain things that only the power of God, the supernatural power can allow us to do, all right? So going back to the, the slide on number 11, we want to, I begin to identify certain concepts as it relates to managing our minds. We understand that when God created us, he created us in his own image, period. 
Now, if God created us in his own image and God has feelings, God has emotions, God is a God of passion, then it simply means that we have been uh, made from the blueprint with the same uh, characteristics, feelings and emotions. What are emotions? Emotions are your passions. And just to name a few of the emotions that I would say we need to be aware of and understand that they must be controlled. We got anger, we got despair, we got desire, we got resentment, self-pity. We need to understand because Growing up in the church, uh, one of the things that was put in my mind back then was you should not get angry. Uh, people who come to church and they talk about their despair and, and, and they're depressed, you know, we tend to kind of look down and say, how can you, you know, be a child of God in the house of God and talking about your, your despair and all of those things. But we need to understand that all of these is a part of the passion, a part of the emotions that God has given onto us. It requires proper management under the influence, again, of the incarnate word, Jesus himself and the Holy Spirit, the supernatural power to lead us to a recognition of who God has created us to be in him so that we can begin to look at the positive sides of the emotions that God has given unto us. So when we go to the positive emotions, we could start to begin to actually, uh, uh, we, we could start to begin to look at uh, or list all the positive emotions and how we enjoy these emotions. So when we talk about joy, when we talk about uh, love, when we talk about rejoicing, we talk about laughter, all of these are emotions. God created us with feelings, but these feelings and emotions must be guided by the word of truth and expressed in ways that glorify God. We must learn how to allow the positive emotions to come forth. In Jesus' uh, beatitude, as Jesus began to preach from day one, look at the word, look at the statement that is being made by the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When we look at the word repent, we find out there are three uh, Greek words all applying themselves to the word repent. But at the same time, they have different concepts attached to them. So one being metanoe, M-E-T-A-N-O-E-O, -E -E another being meta -me -lo -me -i, M-E-T-A-M-E-L-O-M-A-I, and the last one being metameo e -E -A, that is M-E-T-A-N-O-I-A. -E -E. Now, all of these words literally says change. That's what Jesus is saying. Change. Change your mindset change your way of behavior. When John the Baptist was preaching, when he said repent, and it tells us that the Pharisees, a whole bunch of folks came to him to be baptized. And he looked at them and he says, wait a minute, you are not ready for this because your mind set have not yet been changed. You are not ready for a new attitude and behavior to walk in the kingdom of God. And so as Jesus began to teach and to preach 
from Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7, we find a whole, uh, uh, let me just say a whole bunch of uh, uh, aspects of announcements that relates themselves to what psychologists, to what the doctors, to what the sociologists is saying to us today in terms of mindset, in terms of change. Jesus tells us very clearly that when it comes to anger, anger needs to be managed. When it comes to your anger, he tells you, look, you have heard it has been said a hold that you are to, uh, uh, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You are to hate the enemy and, and love your brother and your sister and all of those things. But I tell you that in this kingdom that is to come, in this time that we're living in, there has to be a change in your mindset in order for you to walk in the kingdom of God. So you must change from hate to love. You must change from anger to allowing to allowing yourself to manage the persecution that comes against you. Realize that what they're doing to you as a servant of God, as a child of God, it was done to the prophets of old. So there is nothing new that is happening to you. In the Lord's prayer that he taught us, we tend to focus and we say, well, this is the model, this is the mode, this is how we pray, and all of these things. But we have not grasped what Jesus is saying in the Lord's Prayer. Look at this. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In the old concept that we are looking at today, the big thing in the world today is about self-esteem, is about self-work. Well, Jesus is saying, look, what I want you to do is to make yourself a part of something bigger. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. We want to be a part of something outside of ourselves. And when we make and allow God to uh, change our mindset so that we become a part of something outside of ourselves. We stop focusing on self and we begin to focus and who God has created us to be from the beginning. Bless the Lord. Now let me explain this. In, 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 in one of the concepts that we deal with in terms of the, the, the collateral arteries. I had absolutely no idea about collateral art arteries until uh, I think it was 2012 when I went to the doctor and they told me, you have had four art attacks. You should be a dead man. You are a miracle. Well, he began to explain to me why I am alive. And what he explained to me was your heart formed collateral arteries. Well, I had absolutely no idea what that was or what it entails. The, 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 the nurses and practitioners online, I know they are getting all excited and say, let me explain it to you. Well, what these collateral arteries are and what the doctor said was literally a lie. And let me explain why. I found out in my investigation that those collateral art, what he called collateral arteries that was formed was not really formed. God put them there from the beginning when he created man. Those arteries were asleep, waiting for a moment when they were called upon. And so when the arteries got blocked, God woke up those collateral arteries and they begin to expand and now to pump the blood around the arteries that were black. In, 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 in short, what I'm saying is that God put within us from day one, everything that is needed for us to glorify him, for, for the body to repair itself 
And all we need to do is to call on the name of the Lord, do what is required of us when it comes to the word. And then God, through the supernatural working of his Holy Spirit, will do for us more than we are able to do for ourselves. Positive emotions needs to be trained. If they are not trained, like I showed before, all of these negative thoughts that are running around in our mind, first of all, we, we did not invite them. And I quote Elder Carson again, they are uninvited guests. The only way you are gonna get rid of uninvited guests that you did not invite into your mind or into your home is to call the police. Because when you say go and they refuse to go, you, your only option now is to call the police, say to the police, there is somebody in my house, he broke into my house, he's not invited, I want him out, come and take him out. When we talk about guarding our mind, the Holy Spirit is our guard. We got angels and we've got to call on the Holy Spirit, call on the word of God and says, listen, there are some thoughts in my mind. I don't want them. I didn't invite them. Arrest them, get rid of them. And you begin to read the word of God, read the word of God, read the word of God. And the more you read the word of God, the repetitiveness of the reading of the word is going to create deep within our subconscious behaviors and, 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 and spontaneous behaviors so that when something happens, rather than having to think about it, rather than having to say, well, we are reacting, there is a spontaneous action that is coming from the subconscious, because we have put the word of God in our minds, in our heart. David says, thy word have I hid in my heart, so that I will not sin against you. So when the uninvited guest comes, set the police on him. Amen. God created us with feelings. And I want to say right here that we need to understand that our emotions are not bad. How we allow our mind to respond and our body to respond, that is what is killing us. Our bodies is a slave to our mind, literally a slave to our minds. Whatever we tell our bodies to do, it's gonna do it. That's why the, 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 the preacher uh, tells us, he says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Jesus picks it up. Whatever is in the heart, that's what's gonna come out. For you can't get sweet water from a well that is bitter. You can't get sweet orange from a sour orange tree. It may be an orange tree, but it have a designated purpose. It is sour orange. So you're not going to get sweet orange from it. We need to understand that we must train our emotions so that our emotions begin to respond as it relates to the word of God. Now, we're going to go now. We're going to skip down. Let's skip down. Let's skip down. And we are going to go all the way down to slide number, uh, slide number 13. No, slide number 14, actually. And there is an image there. Everything that we think, every thought that we think, everything that has to do with anything with our body resides literally in our brain. That's what we call the mind. 
We call it our spirits. We call it the soul. Every operation is coming from there. It must be guarded. We have to guard our minds. If we do not guard our minds, we are letting ourselves in for a host of trouble. How do we guard our minds? Well, literally, we have to allow for the word of God to build strongholds in our mind, fortress within our mind. A fortress is built for the purpose of protecting whosoever and whatsoever is on the inside. When, 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 when the preachers preach and he says, God has built an edge around us. And if you break the edge, the serpent will bite. What he is saying is that there is a wall, there is a fortress, there is protection that has been built. That protection has to be the word of God. And when we, when our intake of the word of God increases, our spirituality, our maturity, our decision making in terms of glorifying God begins to increase. I'm going to stop here for a moment. Um, before Sister Olivia comes in, Pastor. Uh, uh, Pastor Query, is there any question relating to what we're saying in the chat? Or anybody want to make a comment? No, no, sir. So far, some good comments are there, but if somebody has a question or they can raise a hand. But so far, just some good comments. I saw one hand going up from Pastor Coward. Okay, let's let's have Pastor Coward. And then I'll ask you to read comments. Good, good, e good evening, everyone. Good evening, Pastor Heard. Excellent presentation so far. Um, I, I, I'm glad for the part that Pastor Wallace did. I had sent two questions to him, but it's not that I don't know the question, but I'm just being facetious. Um, isn't it, <laughs> we, isn't the brain physical? Yes, in the in the brain you'll find the mind. Just, just, just clear up that part for me, Pastor Heard. Isn't okay. our brain something physical? That, that organ is physical, something yeah. you can see, but you can't see the mind. The mind is um more, 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 more in the in the brain, but it, it cannot be touched and and, and 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 support. Yes, you're quite correct. The brain is physical, so is the heart physical. However, in the scriptures, when we refer to the heart. We're not referring to the physical um, uh, organ there, but we are referring to the spiritual or the inner man. The same thing applies when we say the spirit. We're not referring now to the, the uh, how do I say this correctly? Because we know we have our own spirit, the spirit of man, but we're referring to the new or the inner man, the spirit, when we refer to the soul, all of these three references are used interchangeably, and but all of them is seated within the brain, because that's where all information, all intake of information, good or bad, that's where it re resides. So the, the mind is literally operating from the brain. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Pastor Query. Yes, sir. Um, Deacon Mix, next. Thank you so much, Pastor Query. Excellent, uh, Pastor Heard. You know, as you as you presented, I remember a story of. A uh, man who went to the doctor, when he went to the doctor, he was feeling all manner of pain over his body. Doctor prescribed some stuff for him. When he came back, 
to the doctor's office. You were saying to the doctor, oh my, you have done something fantastic. I don't know how, how is it that um, these, 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 these tablets, they work wonders. And doctor said to him, um, they weren't really tablets. You know, they were, they were, they were really candies. They were really candid. And, and, and so the point I'm making is that the mind is so powerful that it can heal your entire body, as you yeah. make mention. Because sometimes, sometimes, you know, what you feed your mind on, that is what you will become. And so I want to say, uh, it's important that sometimes when you go to your bed, that you try go to your bed with something positive on your mind. Go to your bed with Corona news on your mind. They're gonna dream about Corona and all of these things. When you go to your bed at night, go to your bed with something that can take you through the night into the morning. I'm not saying anything is wrong with news, but if you if you are going to your bed and it's all it's a, it's a cowboy movie, movie. Lord of mercy, your wife, you're in the news bed and I think you're a you're a, you're a you're a cowboy. I'm saying try and train your mind in such a way that you can go to your bed with positive thoughts in your mind. I I'll leave Amen. it at that. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, Sister Olivia? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm going to okay. ask you now and then before we go to the next slide. All right. Um, that was a lot, everyone. Uh, <laughs> I was over here taking a lot of notes. First to... Um, just to everyone, thank you for having me here. Uh, it's been great just listening in and I've been taking notes, um, just trying to connect some things and reading the questions in the chat and how it relates to this topic. Um, I kind of want to just talk about, go over what we went over last week, just a little bit, just to touch on some things and how um, theory connects to the biblical concepts, uh, science, uh, they have reviewed the Bible and they're taking the signs and wonders and the miracles and they're putting words to it. How do these things happen? We're talking about the mind. Um, we're talking about the process of the mind. And without the mind, our bodies can't function. Uh, when someone goes brain dead, their heart might be pumping, but without the brain, the organs begin to fail. So my question is to everyone, what are we feeding our brain? Uh, what are we intaking into our body in order for us to remain healthy? Uh, those 70,000 thoughts that come through our, our mind, I did not realize it was so many. In my mind, I thought it was three or four and my mind is rushing, but reality, it's so much more. Um, so what are we doing to combat some of those negative thoughts that may come into our mind? Um, just looking at uh, some of the things that we talked about. In one of the slides, it talked about um, the blood and the neurons and how it forms together and that process. Uh, when we think about the Bible, we, we talk about the blood all the time. Um, and we talk about having the blood of Jesus. Uh, I want you to think about the science. Once again, when they talk about the blood, they talk about um, how the blood is renewed through our body. We, we make new blood every single day. Uh, but there's always a connection between the Bible and science. So I don't want us to think that it's separate. It goes hand in hand. So one of the other things that uh, Pastor Wallace talked about, he's talking about the word and the word of God. And in the beginning was the word. And when we think about uh, just the world, you know, there's a quote that um, the most powerful thing in the world is knowledge. Um, and it goes back into what we are feeding ourselves. So when we're talking about the mind and renewing their mind, we really wanna focus on what that process looks like. One of the questions in the chat was, you know, is it okay to ask for these gifts? Absolutely. Um, we ask for gifts all the time, but keep in mind, there's a process before those gifts are delivered. There are people that ask and say, God, I want more money. Question one is, God's probably looking at you like, okay, can you manage the money that I, I have for you right now? Okay, let's look at that process when we are, um, I'm giving you new things, the challenges that are coming up. How do I prepare you for when that increase comes? So when we're talking about the gift. Yes, 
I agree. Ask for it because I ask for it. I know, but during that process, before I get it, God is training me and giving me the tools that I need so that I can be effective using that gift. So I want us to keep that in mind when we're talking about the gift, but there's always a process that is aligned with that. Um, so when we're talking about the negative thoughts and uh, the positive thoughts, with that process, you know, I was raised in the church and, you know, one of my favorite things that I remembered was um, when we had youth service in the evenings and we had swords in hand and we had to find those scriptures. And in, in Sabbath school, we had to memorize uh, Bible verses and things like that. And the old songs that I remember, you know, during those times when I'm having a hard time where those 70,000 thoughts are going through my mind and I can't sleep. I'm praying to God, like, all right, God, I, something is going on. And those scriptures come back to me. Those songs come back to me that kind of helped me through that process to remove some of those negative thoughts from my mind. And I really focus on those positive thoughts. So it's important to remember, as we're talking about the process of renewing our mind, what are we feeding ourselves in that process? As he mentioned, the, the, the deacon that mentioned, you know, watching a, a movie at night and you're having nightmares about, you know, someone chasing you with guns. Well, what did you, did you eat something before you went to bed? Like, what's, what's going on? So you want to think about with this process, what am I going to feed myself to make sure that I'm healing my mind specifically? So how do I get rid of those negative thoughts? Those negative thoughts are going to come up. But how do I not dwell on those negative thoughts? How am I replacing those thoughts with the positive thoughts? How am I using those scriptures to apply to my situation to help me during that process? A just man falls seven times, but he gets back up again. In this process, yes, you may fall. It takes about 66 days for us to change a habit. So with this process of renewing our mind, it may not take seven days. It may not take 28 days. And within that process, you may fail a couple of times. But the point is, with that failure, you're learning. You're learning about the mistakes that you made. And you're learning what you could have done differently. I have a, a podcast with uh, two other sisters from my church. And um, one of the podcasts is about holding space. So with this concept, it really focuses on um, taking the time to kind of debrief with yourself with those positive and negative thoughts and figuring out what's going, what's going on. Is this within my control? Is this something I can change? And figuring out what the next step will be moving forward. So holding space is just having that conversation with yourself, taking notes reading the scripture, praying, meditation, doing all of these things to kind of figure out in this process, okay, what's happening? Why do I feel the way that I feel? And why, am, and why are the behaviors that I'm presenting happening this way? So a lot of the things with this process is very internal, but then there's things that we see that are outward. So these are the behaviors that we're seeing. And based on those behaviors, we can determine a pattern of the changes that are happening with the renewing of your mind. So as we go through this process, uh, there's another slide that uh, Pastor Hurd is gonna talk about. We'll kind of talk about what that process looks like. But the first step to that process, and I believe everybody on tonight is ready to begin that process because you're here, is acknowledging that yes, I am ready for a change, Yes, I want to renew my mind. Yes, I'm willing to take those steps and knowing that it's not an easy process. You're going to have to try and try again. You have another day, another minute, another hour to try that process again with renewing your mind. So I'm going to hand it back over to Pastor Hurd so we can get into a little bit about what that process looks like and some of the steps that you can potentially take. Thank you, Sister Olivia. Awesome. <laughs> Bless the Lord. And you can just go directly to that next slide. 
um, that we're going to do. Uh, before we start talking about the process here, I want to remind us that the, 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 the thought or one of the scriptures that we are basing this entire presentation on is be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformed metamorphosis. Metamorphosis, like the, the caterpillar, like the tadpole, a complete change, but this, this change does not happen overnight. It's a process. In, 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 and I'm looking back at my, my young days in the church when I got saved, and as soon as I make a mistake, I mean, you, you know those folks who were coming down on you because they expected you to be righteous overnight. We are now understanding that yes, the Lord cleans us up, change us, we become new creatures, but he has left us to do some things for ourselves. Jesus says, gives us the story of the man who was possessed. And he drives out the devil out of this person, drives out the demon, cleans him up. And guess what? He did not do anything else. He left him there empty. The man's house, the temple was empty. And he says the devil went away or the demon went away roaming the streets and searching and searching and he couldn't find any place to rest. So he finally remembers the house that he left and he came back to see if anything was done and he finds it empty. He gets all happy runs around, finds seven demons more wicked than himself to come and occupy. Simply speaking, yes, the Lord saves us. We are saved. We are a new creation, but we are now required to do something. B E, onuses on me, transform metamorphosis by the renewing of your mind change. So in this um, uh, picture that we are looking at, on the left side, we will see that this is on the outside. This is the external. This is where all the stimuli are coming from, what we see, what we hear, what we feel. And as, as these things touches us, touches our mind, all of a sudden, there's a physiological manifestation by the body as to what it's seeing, to what it's hearing, and all of these things. So, so, so let's start on the left side here. And it says it's the input, it's the receiving. So we need to understand from this that we now need to make a distinction in what we are receiving into our minds as knowledge. We want to make a distinction as to what we are seeing, what we are hearing, what we are believing. Because once it goes on the inside, there is the potential for it to become a belief. And if we allow it to be manifested, and how often that happens, it can become a part of our character. It can become a habit, and we will literally die from that. So first in the input here, and there are some scriptures and all of that. We're not able to see that unless you bring it up very close, but there are some scriptures there. And so the first one is the I. I gate. What kind of uh, movies are you watching? What kind of uh, things are you letting 
your, your, your mind received through the eyes. Be careful of what you see. Then when we come down further, right under where you're able to see the word and this person is surrounded here, there's a little note above his head that says abide in and he is surrounded and he's hearing stuff. Uh, there is uh, uh, passages of scriptures on the right, Psalms, uh, Romans and John passages of scriptures on the right. But what we're seeing here is that he is hearing. First he sees, then he hears, and he has to make a decision as to what he's going to allow. You see an arrow that is now going into the heart. So he has to make a decision on what he's going to allow to go into the heart. Further down, you will also see uh, looks like a mask, but it's supposed to be a church. And that represents fellowship. Who are you fellowshipping with? There's fingers touching. What are you touching? Who are you touching? What are you touching? The Bible says, touch not, taste not, handle not, maybe out of the context, but we got some folks who just love to touch. Literally, we got some folks in church I'm talking about church, and I know I'm talking about us brothers. You love to touch, but you won't touch your wife at home. I'm getting myself in trouble. Be careful. The, the, the fingers, you might not be able to see. It, it seems imperceptible, but there is a, a passage underneath it. It says Psalms 1. We all know that. Let us be careful. Now it goes down and now we have the worship. Uh, we have prayer and all of that is actually going into the heart, into the mind. Within the mind, we got a whole bunch of concepts. And I, let me stop for a moment, a moment because when I, when, I, when I took, downloaded this, this uh, uh, picture, I actually counted all the little um, photos and all of that that is there, pics and all of that is there, and it did not come close to the 48 thoughts that goes into my mind in one minute. Did I say 48? Did not come close. I think I counted like 29 or, or somewhere there and I stopped, literally. And you can see that the, 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 the message that this person who presented this pic wanted us to have, that we are running away. There is a man, there is a man or a fellow on the, the left here that is actually running away from something. And the rest, that is the intake that is going into the mind, into the art, they are all good stuff. I can speed up my speech because my time is running out. So when you look on the inside here, we are seeing reasoning and perception. We see faith, hope, love, uh, multitude, uh, attitude, character. Um, um, uh, we see humbleness. We see meek, poor in spirit. We see merciful. Uh, we see feelings and emotion. We see joy. We see peace. And just to stop for a minute, because when we look at these concepts and we remind ourselves of what the fruit of the spirit and we begin to pull the pegs joy is an emotion but it is the good it is the positive peace same thing it is the positive emotion when we get down to desires desires can be good and desires can be bad, but we have to allow the desires, we have to allow the motivations, we have to allow the passions, the hungering and the thirsting, all of those things, we have to allow them to be desires that are, are, are yes. laced. Can I say laced? It is surrounded by the word of God. Amen. Thought, imagination, 
uh, intention, motive, impulse. And, and then you see what is coming out of the mind, out of the heart on the right, and I'm coming to a close on the right. Yes, it shows us that we are now put. Yeah, yeah. We see that it's putting out some, some positive, positive uh, 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 concepts, um, promises, uh, peacemaker, I mean, just on and on, servanthood, uh, discipleship. It's just amazing when we allow for the intake of the word from the left to, to, to actually put its stamp on what is on the mind, what is going to come out is going to come out as the manifestation of the glory of God, Christ in us. Sister Olivia, you want to you wanted to deal with some of these concepts. Please go ahead. Yes, um, I wanted to. Sister Olivia, just before you mm -hmm. take that um, stun, I saw Brother Jeffrey Hand. I don't know if um, he can make his point before okay. Brother Jeffrey. But I could do it after. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Sister Olivia go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, I, I might, maybe I'll answer your question. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I wanted to break down this, this chart a little bit. Um, just, just some of the terms that are being used. So, so in my position, in my job, I'm a behavior analyst. So looking at this chart, this is what I do every single day. So what we would call this would be an ABC chart. So antecedent behavior consequence chart. So the input received would be your antecedent. What's in the heart is your actual behavior. And then the output would be the consequence. So your consequence could be positive or it could be negative. It depends on what that input is, okay? So looking at that process, what are we feeding ourselves, which determines what our behavior is going to be. So the behavior could be repentance. Um, it could be changing some of the habits, but based upon what the behavior is will result in the actual consequence. So when we're talking about the consequence. It doesn't have to be something negative. It could be positive as the things that we're seeing in this chart, but based upon what we see, remember, it could be some negative things too. Mm -hmm. So as we're thinking about the input, what are we feeding ourselves? And we talk about the input. This is something that's happening right before these behaviors occur. Mm -hmm. So when I'm talking with someone and they're saying, you know, let's say they say they, they feel depressed. I automatically say, well, what does that look like? Because I need to know what's in the heart, what that behavior actually is. And then I get them to tell me a story of what's really happening so I can see what that input is that's causing the behavior. By the time they get to me, their output could potentially be negative or it could be positive. So at that point, I'm helping them um, transition or change some of the things that they're putting in that may not be beneficial to them and how they can reap the positive consequences on the end. Okay, Brother Jeffrey, your question. Yes, thank you, sister. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a question. Um, actually, it, it is kind of what you were saying. Um, just in terms of, you know, the imagination, um, like, I'll say, I'll say it like this. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of people who, who go through things. Um, and I'm gonna say it like this, I'm particularly black people. All right. Um, and you know, throughout time, throughout history, there's been a lot of, you know, things that have happened uh, to our people. And, you know, I find, not, I find it very, like it could be offensive sometimes because how I, how I want to say this properly without trying to offend anybody, but um, I want to say it the right way. But uh, basically what I'm trying to say or ask is, do, do you feel that there are some advantages for more some people more than others. Do you feel like there are some disadvantages um, 
throughout, I'll say the word community for now, okay. because of because of the of the past. Um, I would say yes. Uh, but speaking for me, I think it really depends on um, that person's situation and depending, it, it really just depends. Um, I think for some people, the process may take longer than others. It, it really just de depends on that, that person. Okay. Do you, do you, uh, throughout your, you know, throughout your studies, um, mm -hmm. working with, um, with children and things like that, do you, mm -hmm. do you find a, do you find a difference within culture? Yes. Okay. Cause I, um, I like I said, I, I don't want to make it like offensive. Like my mother, she's from ASL. So I, I feel like I can speak on this cause I can I think, different. Okay, I think go the, ahead, sis. the response to addressing change looks different um, depending on the environment that they are raised. I believe in the black community uh, when it comes to therapy and things like that, it's hard for them to receive that. Um, they take offense to that. So I believe in some other cultures, they're more open to it. It really just depends on the environment that that family has been raised in and at what point in their life they surrounded themselves by like-minded thinkers or uh, individuals that have influenced them to think differently um, in regards to taking the steps towards change. So I think it could be, I would say the environment, it really depends. I have some families who have always been open, um, but their family and their, you know, grandparents and things like that have always been open to certain things. So I really think it depends on the culture and the environment that they're in. All right, bless us. Thanks. Thank you. Um, uh, one of the things that we are reminding ourselves this evening is that the battle or the fight against sin, temptation, and I'm going to say this, whether it is spiritual or physical, is in the mind. Literally in the mind. The mindset makes a difference in terms of how we accept things, how we see things. Um, uh, I wanna give a short story, but before I do that, Pastor Coward, you're here with us. You are into crisis intervention and de-escalation. Uh, in terms of what we are saying here now about change and mindset, what would be your thought to, in terms of a person who is always um, causing a crisis? Whether in the church uh, or out. It, 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 good evening again, everyone. Um, it all depends, Pastor Heard, because um, sometimes it is socialization why an individual behave a certain way and sometimes it is because the person he or she wants to be seen um they might lack something the person might lack something whether it's a, especially a child a child Say, let us use a child for instance a child might be acting not necessarily hyperactive but the child just behaving away because he or she wants to be seen. I had to say to a young young boy, he was nine. He was going on, going on in the church. I'm going to use that church one now. He was going on. Um, his mom wasn't there, but his grandmother was there, and he was making a lot of noise, you know. And he was, <laughs> and so I said, um, so and so, we know that you are here, you know. Don't worry yourself, man. I know you are there. And that's all he wanted was someone to acknowledge that he was there. So um, sometimes in, in, in the society, a person might behave a certain way. It depends on socialization. And, 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 and sometimes, as I said, socialization cause any one of us to act certain ways, but it's only the spirit of God. 
I think it's only the spirit of God because many of us who are, you know, Christian call upon the true and living God. Why we don't behave as others do? It's just the mercies of God. Uh, one writer said, there goes I, save the grace of God. So sometimes you see a person acting up, whether within the, within the community or within the church, um, behaving in a negative way. Sometimes it is um, physical and sometimes it can be psychological. So sometimes what, not sometimes, but all times, sometimes what, so all the time, what we need to do is that thing I use called talk therapy. And I see it is very effective. I just call the person one away and we just sit. And then you do active listening. You don't butt in, just let the person talk and talk. Sometimes I just let them vent. I said, I am here, you know non-judgmental with a listening ear. Just tell me what's going on in your mind. Tell me. Same thing we're talking about, the brain and the mind. Just tell me what is going on in your mind. I know this is not you. You might say you're going to kill the person. right? You might be speaking very violently. And I'm just going to do it abstractly. I'm not going to go in specific abstractly. A person might be acting violently past her. Yes. And you call him or her by themselves and say, tell me what's happening, man. I'm here to listen. I will give you 40 minutes of my time. Just, just tell me. Don't be afraid. No one else is here but mm -hmm. you and I and God. Just tell me what is happening. So sometimes yeah. you, when you get a person to vent or to talk what is happening, within their soul, in their mind. You're trying to see a changed person, a changed being, but all they want is one, a listening ear. Not for yeah. you to advise them or tell them anything. They want somebody to offload, to offload what is in the mind. So sometimes as, 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 as church persons, as ministers, as leaders, we need to give people some of our time do active listening and don't butt in. Just let them talk. Sometimes they're rambling, you know, rambling, rambling, and you can use psychology and ask them, okay, just take me back to that part. Right? Anytime you hear something that they say, just go back to that specific era. So, Pastor, there's a lot we can do, a lot more we can do. And as I said, sometimes the person just wants to be heard. They yeah. act in a certain way because they want somebody to acknowledge them. Everybody wants to be seen and everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants a, a listening ear to yeah. know that, hey, you acknowledge me. I am here and I need to be listened to. So that's what people do, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Coward. Um, I wish that we could continue in this trend because you know we are actually talking about how to retrain our minds how to allow our minds to receive new information but the fact is that there are at times when we have a whole bunch of garbage in our heads that needs to come out like we says that you have to replace the negative with the positive and the, 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 the negative needs to get out before sure. we can have the positive um, being placed there. And yes, we understand. That's why we said there from, from day one that um, we can't do anything of ourselves. We need the spirit of God. We need the word of God to help us in, in all of this. But, but let me stop here, Pastor Perry. I know my time is up. Um, we need to be non-judgmental, Pastor Heard. We need to be non-judgmental when we are dealing with people. Yeah. When we are giving a listening here, we need to right. be non-judgmental. Yes. So um, let me stop yes. here. Query is going to come in, um, but Pastor Curry, I'm going to ask you, I know the time is up, but I would love to hear um, Pastor Wallace's 
um, uh, concept just for a minute or so on, on the last portion here as it relates to um, the socialization. Um, you know, I just like that, the way that uh, Pastor Coward put it because there's a lot of things that are happening within our congregation that is a result of the, 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 the environment in which folks are coming out of. And as much as they have given their lives to the Lord, we are having a, a difficult task of allowing them to understand that that behavior needs to go. We, we, we have been in church and we have heard people saying, a summer bond, I'm no afraid of nobody, and all of these things. So, so we need to understand that in terms of the new attitude, the new behavior, irrespective of what we think we have within our mind or what our heart is telling us, it has to change. One of the things that the devil does is that he lies to us. He is a liar. Amen. And the word of God tells us very clearly when the devil lies, the only way to understand that he's lying to us is to match what is there with the word of God. When he is lying, we're, not, we're going to go into some more concept on next week as we deal with uh, the mindset. But when the devil is lying and the devil comes and tell you that you're not saved, you're not worth it, and a whole bunch of foolishness, people with with, 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 with just negative attitudes towards themselves. You need to take the word of God into your heart. The word of God declares, if your heart is lying to you, and, and you know, our phrasing, if your heart is lying to you, just know that God is greater. Pastor Query. Amen. So Pastor, Pastor Wallace, she said. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Heard. Um, Sister Corey has her hand up. After that, then we take Pastor Wallace and then we go, you go to the wrap up, Pastor. Thank you. I think maybe Pastor Wallace's quest, um, comments can answer this. There are some people, I, I am coming now and I'm hearing the presentation, so I am sort of trying to position myself for change, but there are persons within the church who has, um, who don't even recognize that they are not on the right path or they are not doing the right thing. How would you advise me? How can I assist that person? Apart from being, I hear um, Pastor um, Coward say be non-judgmental, but when you talk to such person and they're going to tell you that they know that they're like back in Jamaica, somebody tell me, I know I'm a liar, but I, I may be a liar, but I'm not a thief. What's the difference between a liar and a thief? It's the same thing, and it's the same. So, are you trying to justify and weigh the, the, those sort of things? How do I advise? How do I guide? How do I um, assist such a one to understand that, um, you know? that we can all change even given our age and, and age is not a factor. All right, so that's, that, that's, a, that's, that's a big question there, sister. Sorry, but let, let me see where I would want to start here. So, so we look at the whole concept of socialization and we know the various agents of socialization. And unfortunately, some persons come into the church and yet they are still holding on to their their own socialization, this renewing, this metamorphosis has not taken place. And then unfortunately, they may find somebody within church who are not a good example of what a Christian ought to be. My advice to an individual who may believe one that, that, that I am a liar or I'm not a thief is that sin spell one way and there is a, a one destination for practicing sinner, right? I would say to that person, then the, the fact is that Jesus Christ died for all of us and he died for condition. He died for the life. He died for the thief. He died for all sinful conditions. 
And there is no way, it doesn't matter how long you may have been in the church. It doesn't matter who you know. If that condition remain with you, you remain in an unrepentant state, state, even though you have been in the church for whatever period of time. And that will not. You're coming to church. And if that's how you see it, then unfortunately, you're, you're just wasting your time. In order for you to make it into it, eternal kingdom of God. And then I would want to ask, do you really want to make it into God's eternal kingdom? Well, you are playing around right now. And what you're doing is, is a, is a one-way ticket out of his kingdom. So you have to, um, so, some person you're going to be just take them one away as Pastor, Quarry, uh, Pastor Coward said, Sister Lisa, just take them one away. Get into their mind. Find out why they're thinking that way because they're a person with twisted thoughts socialization and the friends that they have around them are not good either. So you'd want to take them one away and to listen to them and to patiently, lovingly try to guide them along the path. Some will change, but like in hospital, Sister Quarry, not everybody who come into the hospital leave out well. Some stay in the hospital until they die. Some person don't want to get better. But you have to you must show that interest. You must show that fear. You must show that love for an individual who you see is on the path to hell and, and don't realize that, that they are doing so. You have to be patient. You have to be there for them. You're going to have to spend time with them. Many will get out of it. But unfortunately, the reality is that not all of you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Wallace. Thank you. Let me just read a closing remark for this evening. What we have been discussing over the last three sessions should help us to underline three facts. Transformation and renewal of the mind requires intervention that is intentional, purposeful, and deliberate. One word I like to use for this is that it has to be spiteful. That means that we recognize who the enemy within our minds are and we are spitefully, intentionally and deliberately going after that behavior. Changing negative thoughts to positive thinking and just so there is no misunderstanding or approach and meeting with the concept of positive thinking is not the same as it is in the world. We're not talking now about positive thinking and getting rich and all of those things. We're talking about being rich towards God in the word of God and in our minds. Positive thinking must be followed with action. James tells us, or is it James that tells us, faith without works is dead. So positive thinking requires action. Don't be afraid to ask for help. As you have heard in this discussion, as we're going around, that we have folks in church who are saved. And, and I know these people love the Lord but they have come with a mindset. They have come with some assumptions about Christianity and Christ that they are not willing to let go. They need help to do that. The word of God says we are to encourage each other and become each other's keeper. And so that's a part of what we want to allow ourselves to understand we need help. Every time that we log on to one of these programs that we are participating in, it is about learning. It is about going away with something that is going to help us to become better stewards for the Lord. And I'll close with this story. I'm sure we have all heard it, but I, I want us to remember it. There is a Man traveling from one of those impoverished 
continents somewhere down there in Africa. He manages to save up some money and he bought a ticket. The ticket that he bought is for a ship. It's a luxury ship, but his mindset is that he could not afford the luxuries that is available on the ship. So he packed himself a bag with cheese and crackers. Every day on the ship, when everybody's eating from the buffet, he would go in a corner, put his head in the bag, and eat his crackers on the ship uh, and his and his cheese. Yes. On the last day, one man came up to him and asked him the question, why don't you eat from the buffet? Why every day I see you putting your head in a bag and eat it? He says to the man, I couldn't afford all of these luxuries. I couldn't afford the buffet, so I brought my own food. And the man said to him, laughing and smiling, didn't you know that your ticket included everything that is on the ship? God has given us the power. Oh my goodness. I'm done. Pastor Query, please take over. I'm getting excited. I'm done. The Lord bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Heard. Thank you, Pastor Heard. Thank you, Sister Olivia. Thank you, Pastor Wallace, Pastor. Howard and all the others who make their comment and question in the chat, Brother Jeffrey, Sister Corey, Brother Deacon Meeks. Thank you all, brethren, that came on, you know, just to learn, to listen. Amen. It is said one of the best ways to learn is to listen. And so we give God thanks for you all tonight. Thank you, Pastor Heard. Thank you so much. The Lord be praised. For the behaved way in which you direct us tonight how to manage the mind from a biblical perspective. And the Bible said, let this mind be in you that mm -hmm. was in Christ Jesus. I see you want to preach, but I'm happy that you hold that strain tonight. God bless you. God Amen. bless you, sir. Thank you so much. We're going to pray the closing prayer. Please stay with us, brethren. Please, I'm asking you to stay with us. We have a few announcements to make. Before we conclude, stay with us. We're going to do the closing prayer. And after that, I'm going to invite Deacon Meeks. And then after Deacon Meeks, we're going to take the benediction. And then after that, we're going to take the announcement. And we're going to close right there. So please bear with us. I'm going to invite Brother Jeffrey. Is he still there? Are you still there, Brother Jeffrey? Brother Jeffrey is not there. I'm going to invite Pastor Coward to just close us in prayer. And then Deacon Meeks, you come on. And then we take it from there. Pastor Coward, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm right here. Please go ahead, sir. Do the closing prayer for us. Thank you. Tonight, we truly give God thanks and praise for this wonderful study, very informative, and we thank God for all the participants. We thank him for his leading. Let us pray. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, another blessed night we come before thee, giving you thanks and praise for your goodness. We thank you for who you are. We acknowledge that you are Lord and God. There is none like unto you. Tonight, we lift you up. Tonight, we thank you for your servants. Oh, yes, those who have took time out to, to research and study and to come, oh God, to broaden our horizon. We just bless your holy name. We thank you, oh God, for this very informative study. Oh yes, we thank you for the discussion. We thank you for the information that has been given. I pray, oh God, that as we go as forward, we, go we, we try and help our fellow men. Mm -hmm. Having received knowledge, help us, oh God, to use it to Oh, yes, assist our fellow men in Jesus. knowing you because whom to know is life eternal. Tonight, Lord, we just bless your holy name. We thank you for everyone on this platform. We thank you for the organizers. Oh, yes, Pastor and Sister Quarry from the Church of God, Sabbath keeping out there in Ottawa. We thank you for Pastor Heard and his daughter, 
Sister Heard. We thank you for Pastor Wallace. We thank you for everyone, oh God. Tonight we just bless your holy name. We lift you up. We praise you and we worship you. We have much to thank you for. We are indebted to you, Lord. But we thank you because you look beyond our faults and you supply all our needs according to your riches in glory. Tonight we praise you and we humbly tell you thanks for this activity. We have learned a lot, O oh God, and we know that there's much more to be oh, yeah, taught and for us to absorb. I pray, O oh God, that you may continue to lighten our darkness, continue to open our understanding more and more, and continue to bless your people. Bless those who are sick, and if there is anyone, O oh God, who have not yet known thee as, as Lord and Savior, any backslider listening on this platform, I pray, O oh God, you may speak peace to their hearts. Help that we who have learned something, O oh God, we will disseminate the information, we will use the knowledge, oh yes, to draw others closer to you. Hear us tonight, O oh God. Again, we have a special blessing upon everyone on the platform. And even those who are not privileged to be here tonight, bless them too, because you are a God who is not partial. Hear us, bless us, and dismiss us with your choicest blessings. These are not an unmentionable favor we ask of you, and tell you thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise God. Thank you so much. Thank you so Amen. much, Pastor. Praise God. Amen.